How environments and ecosystems are modified by humans. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at providing food through mechanisation of farming and commercial fishing, providing of energy through deforestation and mining, and providing water through reservoirs and water transfer. Let's start with providing food through mechanised farming. All mechanised means is using machinery in order to get us our crops. Now the first problem with this type of farming is we are lessening the amount of plants and animals that we have in the countryside. Farmers will cut down hedges so that they have the largest amount of land possible to farm. Um, this destroys the creatures that are in the hedges. Um, they have one crop uh, within a field um, and this totally reduces the number of plants that there are within our countryside. Um, in this example, you can see oil seed being grown. So there's only one plant uh, within that field. If weeds grow, they will be destroyed. Um, also, insects and creatures might not like oil seed, so they might move away to other areas. So having one crop in one field means a loss of biodiversity. Secondly, if we remove hedgerows, we remove bushes and trees from the ground, it means that the wind can just blow away the soil. There aren't the roots of the plants holding it together anymore. Um, the sun can beat down and um, solidify and make the soil like concrete because it's so hot. Um, and this means that the quality of the soil is reduced and the soil gets washed away or blown away. Finally, we put lots of chemicals onto our fields. Herbicides um, kill weeds and pesticides kill bugs. If these herbicides and pesticides go into streams, they can harm wildlife. Fertilizers that we put on fields help crops to grow. So if fertilizers go into streams, they help weeds to grow. Um, the weeds and algae growing really well take the oxygen out of the water, which can kill fish, known as eutrophication. Next, we'll move on to the providing of food through commercial fishing. First thing to note is we are fishing out of the sea more fish than can be replaced naturally. Certain species such as bluefin tuna are, are on their way to becoming extinct. Secondly, a large amount of fish, fish that we catch we don't actually want. They get swept up in enormous nets and very long fishing lines. So if you have a look at this diagram here, um, the fishermen didn't want the shark, but the shark has died all the same, um, which is incredibly wasteful. Next, we fish um, using a technique called bottom trawling, where metal weights are put within huge nets to drag the net across the bottom of the sea. And this can destroy coral and again scoops up everything within the net, um, which can lead, it, lead to it dying. Finally, in certain parts of the world, people fish using poison and explosives, which is effective, but it kills everything within that area of sea, even things that are not wanted. Providing energy through deforestation. Deforestation is the cutting down of trees and two billion people worldwide depend on wood for cooking and heating. Um, also, we clear large areas of forest um, to get at the minerals underneath the forest for mining and drilling. Now, what are the problems of cutting down trees? Uh, firstly, trees absorb CO2, a greenhouse gas. So trees are very good at reducing the effects of global warming. Get rid of them and we're speeding up the pace of global warming. Secondly, trees are a habitat for creatures. 70% of all plant and animal species live in forests, so cutting down trees um, could lead to extinction of species. Removing trees leads to soil erosion because their roots were holding the soil together. And finally here, trees intercept rainfall, so removing of them makes flooding more likely within an area. We're now moving on to providing energy through mining. Now, all mining is, is taking certain minerals out of the ground uh, that are useful for humans. Surface mining is where we do it on the surface of the ground. Deep shaft mining is where we go deep underground to try to reach our minerals. Recently, fracking has been developed to get sources of natural gas. 
This is where water's pumped into the rock at high pressure to release the gas. Now here are some problems of mining. Habitats are destroyed. Mining uses a huge amount of fresh water and fresh water is limited in the world. Only 1% of the water is fresh water. Um, the rest of the water is either locked up in ice on the planet or it's salt water, it's seawater. Waste from mines can also pollute soil and water, so mercury and lead are very toxic to plants, animals and people. Finally, we're going to look at providing water through reservoirs and water transfer. Now, all a reservoir is, is a large lake that has been developed behind a concrete barrier, a dam that stretches across the river. Now, problems with building these reservoirs, which are a great supply of water um, for humans in drier periods, but problems of building these reservoirs are that large amounts of land have to be flooded to create them. This, this destroys habitats, fields, sometimes there's even been people or local tribes living on those areas behind the dams and they have to move house. Dams also act as a barrier to species movement. Salmon famously um, migrate upstream to lay their eggs. And if you've got a big concrete barrier going across the stream or river, it stops them from doing that. In certain places, they've built salmon ladders, areas of water where the salmon can hop upstream, um, but it's not as good as having a natural river. Finally, um, rivers naturally carry soil and silt downstream, which gives us fertile fields um, next to the river. If you have a big dam, it'll stop that process from occurring. Water transfer is the way that we move water from areas where there's too much rain to areas where there's too little. All of Birmingham's water comes from the Elan Valley in North Wales, and this shows the pipes that were built going underneath the ground using a boring machine to bring the water from north of Wales to Birmingham. What are the problems with this? Well, large scale engineering works creating the new channels damage the ecosystems. Lots of energy is needed to pump the water over the hundreds of miles it needs to move. This will release greenhouse gases and can help to cause climate change. And finally, in dry years, there may be water shortages in the areas that the water is coming from. And this puts pressure on the local ecosystems, for example, there in the north of Wales.